Welcome back to the online summit here at Peppel and Fuchs. And now it's time to start our live lounge. Lounge means you can participate, you can ask us questions, give input, whatever you like. Just use the button on the lower right side for the chat option. And today we are talking about Ethernet APL. We already got a good impression how and where it is needed, for example, in this level instrument. Well, basically this instrument can provide many values, but the way the fields um, are built up these days, only one, whoop, <laughs> one value can be communicated. But Ethernet APL is gonna change this. How? We will listen to the presentation of Andreas Hennecke. Andreas, stage is yours. And I take the instrument with me. Thank you, Ali, for the introduction. Hello, I am Andreas Hennecke at Peppel and Fuchs. I'm part of the development team and I'm responsible for technology and product marketing for digital communications and process automation. Today I would like to take you on the journey of Ethernet APL and what, give you a behind the scenes look what it takes to actually build a physical layer the Ethernet advanced physical layer for the field of process automation. You might ask, why did our developers actually decide for Ethernet? But maybe we need to ask this question entirely differently. Could we ever imagine a life without it? Let's have a look. Ethernet enables high-speed communication, transports large data generated in production, it enables the coordination of complex tasks, handles data traffic in warehouses. It connects computers in our office environments and our smart TV and game stations to the internet. Ethernet is the accepted communication standard for networks. So, what does it take to build a physical layer? I have just, uh, split my presentation into three different parts. Let me take you on the journey of what it takes to define a physical layer. We will look at the installation concepts of what it takes for users to apply Ethernet APL in their plans. And we will look at some ways on how we can actually improve our working processes if we have fast digital communication in the field of process industries. That will be under the title of compatibility. Well, we just started with this level instrument, and our users literally have thousands of them sometimes installed in the field, each of them only reporting one value at a time. With digital communication, such as Ethernet, it would be possible for the instrument to bring along its entire documentation. And this means there will be no further searching for the right device description or GSD file, or enhanced DDL file, or FDI package, whatever the solution is that you're using to integrate devices into your DCS, that search is over because the device can actually bring it to you right out of the box. So we can actually design this with the documentation inside the instrument. We can store any type of parameters and configuration inside the instrument and the entire tag information. So this information is available as built. And our maintenance team can also have access to this information right there when the instrument itself reports an issue with itself and requires some tag upkeep from a maintenance technician. All of that comes together. So, in addition, we get a little extra, and that is digital communications. So what is it that we actually think about when we think Ethernet? Here's how. Take a look. Think of Ethernet, and many people think of a connector like this. You plug it in, and your device connects to the network. No matter what the age of the device or the speed that it connects with, it always works, no questions asked. This does not work for the field of process automation, where we're looking for something more ruggedized, like a two-wire cable. This provides us with the installation simplicity that is required to work in the field of a process plant. 
Ethernet EPL is all about defining the standard that allows us to bring Ethernet to the field of process plans. So this is the cable that we like to use in process inter, inter, uh, industries. This is the cables that are user demands because it offers, for example, high resiliency to electromagnetic interference. It is also very easy to install because it only has two wires. And as one technician once said, you just don't know how many ways you can connect two wires wrong. But there are a couple of limitations that we have to overcome. First of all, Ethernet today, the way it is defined, only limits us to 100 meter of cable length. That is just plain not enough for the field of process industries. We're having some issues with power supply because instrumentation also want to be connected not only for communication, but they require power. And then the entire area of explosion hazardous protection. And as a side benefit, with Ethernet APL, we're going to get just a little bit of extra speed. There are four aspects to communication that we need to standardize in order to provide a complete physical layer. That is communication, power supply, installation, and explosion protection. Let us take a look at each and every one of those four aspects. Number one, communication. These are just a list of five different subgroups of IEEE committees defining single pair Ethernet. And let me just point out one of them to you. There's currently a standard in development that will have 10 gigabits, 10 gigabits of Ethernet on two wires but they can only do a length of 15 meters. Now that would be the type of cabling that you, and communication that you would need in a data center or inside a large server cabinet. On the other hand, we have those applications where you have more cable distance that we need. And that brings us to the bottom line here in the diagram, 10 megabits that can run up to 1,000 meters. This standard has been released in December last year. Now, there are many market participants interested in this particular physical layer, starting with building industries. So imagine the entire office building or even your private home being wired with Ethernet that can also transmit power. And another aspect is the automobile industry. And of course, our customers in process industries are also looking to have Ethernet in their plants and 1,000 meters gets us there. Now, communication is only one part. Ethernet APL thus uses communication on 10 base T1L, 10 for 10 megabits, T1 for a single pair line, and L for long distances. Let's take a look at the power supply. The power, the way it is defined today, there are various standards also for Ethernet, such as Poodle, which is not the dog, but power over data line, or PoE, power over Ethernet, are different standards that provide power. Now, you will find that all of these four aspects are interconnected. So say, for example, we can transmit up to 92 watts of power, which is defined in Ethernet APL. But then at the other end of the spectrum, we also need a power limitation for the purpose of intrinsic safety. Now, with a two-wire Ethernet, APL is extremely explicit, specifying polarity independence. So no matter how you connect the two wires, the instrument will always connect and work. What's unique about Ethernet APL is that we have four different types of ports. Now, power source and power load are quite obvious. And you can also run Ethernet APL as an unpowered port or an unpowered connection where you have auxiliary power supply available inside the cabinet or the device needs it anyway. The interesting part is a cascade port, which actually auto adopts. So it will actually detect whether or not it needs to be a load port or a source port, depending on what the wire actually is transmitting to the port. We will see later how that actually allows us to very easily daisy chain devices with Ethernet APL. Thirdly, there's the installation. The referenced cable type for Ethernet APL is type A cable. This is a well-known cable type in the industry, and there's millions of kilometers literally installed in plants today. 
Now building on this cable type allows us to easily migrate our plans. You can have screw type or clamp type connectors like the way you see them here in the picture. Now I can tell you when we first talked to the IEEE committee and we taught them about what we needed, a sturdy cable and a screw type connector, all the communications guys went haywire and said, you want to do 10 megabits over this? This is not possible. Well, they had to learn a little bit about our connections that we actually need, and they actually adapted to that as well. And now we have a standard that allows us to do that. There are also M8 and M12 connectors available. Now let's take a look at intrinsic safety. This is an easy way to actually realize explosion protection for hazardous areas. If you're new to or intrinsic safety, please ask your Pepple and Fuchs specialist. They will give you an introduction to the subject. It is an easy method to prevent sparks by limiting the electrical energy in a circuit. Now, there's a lot of calculations that need to be done and they are typically done for each loop. And this is not very practical. And from past experience that we already have, a new standard is on the way in an IEC program, which is two-wise. Now, this is short for two-wire intrinsically safe Ethernet, two-wise. And this particular standard defines interoperability. It gives you some very simple planning and installation rules. And because the electrical values are already kept by cable manufacturers and instrument vendors, it is extremely easy to set this up. And for those of you who recognize FISCO, the field bus intrinsically safe concept, as a matter of fact, a couple of the people that are working on the 2Y standard are the same ones that developed FISCO 25 years ago. So what does it take from an application standpoint? We want to make this reasonably easy to apply and be extremely safe in our working procedures. So take a simple checklist. Select the parameters relevant for your hazardous area and select the instruments that comply with this standard. Select the suitable cable that matches that and you only need to document these things and you're basically done. You have validated and verified that explosion protection is in place and safe for the plan to use. And I can tell you that IEEE members that are communication specialists have learned a little bit more about explosion protection and I can feel with you guys if you're watching because I felt the same way when I started with Peppel and Fuchs 15 years ago. So now we have all four things in place. Communication, power supply, installation, and explosion protection. With all those four ingredients matching properly, we can now run 10 megabits at 1,000 meters in the plant. And we can have concurrent access to the instrumentation installed there. Now this doesn't happen because one company does so. There are actually four major user organizations involved in this process. Fiatcom Group, ODVA, Profibus and Profinet International, and just in July of 2020, the OPC Foundation joined the club and give, lends their support to an Ethernet on two wires in the field of a process plant. In this project also 12 companies collaborate and there are important and very relevant names in for process industries, considered DCS manufacturers such as Yokogawa or Siemens. Rockwell Automation, Emerson and ABB are behind this project. This is also true with instrument vendors such as Anderson Hauser, Crony, Samsung or Vega. It is a large team of 12 companies that is putting this together and we're looking to produce a standard or a package of standards that make it easy for every vendor to adopt and every user to apply. So we have covered the basics of what it takes to define the technology for a physical layer. Now let's have a look at what it takes for you to implement it actually in a real environment. Here we go. The Ethernet Advanced Physical Layer fits any process plant. As the installation architecture provides flexibility and explosion protection, 
for all types of hazardous areas. But first, let's look at the terminology for Ethernet APL infrastructure and components. Segment is the connection between switches or between switches and instruments. The trunk is a long reach cable with up to a thousand meters in length with high power and signal strength. The spur is a connection cable to an instrument with up to 200 meters and lower power and signal strength. Spurs can be implemented with intrinsic safety. Ethernet APL only defines point-to-point -point connections. Its communications are robust as crosstalk between segments is practically impossible. There are just two kinds of switches needed to support the complete infrastructure. One is the power switch, which provides power to the trunk line, and the other, the field switch, which provides power to the spur line where the instrument is connected. This is the infrastructure for Ethernet in the field. The top level consists of controllers, process visualization, engineering, and asset management systems. Other connected systems may be cloud-based, such as long-term data storage. Ethernet APL connects to the top level inside the control cabinet. The switches support ring redundancy for high availability. Next, let's take a look at the Ethernet APL infrastructure and topology for long-reach plants, common in outdoor installations like oil and gas, water treatment, and chemical plants, with cable lengths up to 1,000 meters to the field. Here, the power switch is installed in the control room. It provides the power for field switches and instrumentation. The field switch, which is powered via the trunk, provides the intrinsically safe barrier for the spur outputs. It serves the following attributes and requirements. Field switches that are powered via the two-wire cable. Distribution through the junction box in the field to multiple instruments supported Ethernet redundancy at the plant level, and explosion protection for any hazardous area. This layout is 100% compatible with the trunk and spur topology, similar to today's Field Connect solutions with power hubs, field barriers, and segment protectors. It provides a path for migration projects as the installed cable can be reused. The Ethernet APL infrastructure and topology for compact plant layout typically serves indoor installations, such as pharmaceutical or food and beverage industries, with cable lengths of up to 200 meters into the field. The topology is called a star topology. The following typical attributes and requirements apply. Field switches that are powered by an auxiliary power supply, installed in junction boxes or control cabinets, supports Ethernet redundancy at the plant level, and explosion protection for any hazardous area. Using only these elements, any combination and layout can be achieved. Pepperell & Fuchs is known as a pioneer and an innovator in electrical explosion protection and communications for the field of process industries. Pepperell & Fuchs will bring safety and stability to your network with Ethernet APL. So it takes only two types of switches to build an entire infrastructure and any infrastructure that meets the dimensional requirements in your plant. There are Pepperell and Fuchs is working on concepts for products that are currently also in testing. Let me show you which ones those are. There's the APL field switch for DIN rail installation. This type of switch is meant for cabinet or junction box installation. It's externally powered and it converts standard Ethernet, the way we connect it today, to Ethernet APL and it powers the spur connection as well. The switch can be installed in Zone 2, Division 2, and it provides intrinsically safe outputs. There is the power switch. It converts standard Ethernet to the APL trunk. Both of these types of switches support ring redundancy at the plant level, so we get high availability with those. This switch will typically be installed inside the control cabinet in the control room. Of course, it is also externally powered. And finally, the third version of a field switch, again, is our Zone 1 field switch. 
And here's where the cascade port comes into play because this switch is actually powered via the APL trunk. And it does not matter from which side you connect it to the APL power switch, the cascade port can then automatically adapt and power its spurs, which are intrinsically safe XIA, which is the protection method that allows you to bring instruments into zone zero and division one. So those are the concepts that will allow you to realize the network infrastructure. Ethernet APL is the enabling technology for data and communications. We started with this instrument. So now we have complete access to it and we can actually get all the information or store all the information inside the device as designed, as built, and of course as maintained. It's just not for the process value, it's everything, diagnostics, configuration, and documentation. Let me show you two different ways on which we can envision Ethernet APL to improve the work life in a process plant. We will be talking about safety signals and modernization and expansions. Peppel and Fuchs is working on concepts that allow you a clear path for modernization and plant expansions. Consider a field bus installation where we have a miniature version here on the screen. A Profibus PA instrument is typically connected to a field barrier or a segment protector to higher level DCS. It communicates with the enormous speed of 31.25 kilobits per second. And it does so extremely reliable. So, if we want to modernize here, all we have to do is actually exchange the infrastructure because the APL field switch can automatically detect whether you have an Ethernet device or a field bus device connected, it will auto adapt and communicate to the device. If we want to remove it or replace it, we just take it off and replace it with an Ethernet based device, for example, a Profinet device. Again, the field switch detects the change on the port and then automatically adapts. It then communicates to the new device and reports its value to the DCS. And even safety. Safety signals currently in process plans run on a separate infrastructure. However, in factory and discrete automation, we already have a concept that is proven in practice. It is called the black channel. And you see just four selections of different types of protocol, such as OPCA, Profinet, and Ethernet IP, and even IO link, which is not even an Ethernet protocol. Now the black channel essentially hides all of the infrastructure, and it allows us to communicate safe signals from a safety instrument to the safety PLC and we can certify this connection immediately as SIL3, completely independent of the wiring and the infrastructure in between. Now with an Ethernet to the field, this would allow us to also have all safety instrumentation on the same channel and on the same wire, and we're saving on infrastructure. These types of protocols are all certified, actually by German notified bodies. Safety must some be some kind of German thing, I guess. So it is a common and straightforward application and we're sharing the same infrastructure which will help all of us reduce cost. It will help the vendors because safety is just a communication stack that will then be put on a proven uh, in use device and it saves our users effort to actually implement safety in the plant. So in summary, we're looking for this. Take a look. Ethernet to the field provides the data highway for concurrent access to the device from the controller and for operations with high precision process data for superior plant performance, for maintenance and inspections with live data on the go via a tablet and app, for engineering with complete data for planning 
or applying changes to a system. And all of this is independent of your device or your location. The right data is always available with Ethernet APL. I invite you to go to our website and download a white paper that has actually been written by the APL project that provides you all the details and the insights for different user groups, such as the engineers and planners, the operators or technicians, as well as the product marketing managers of other vendors to, for you to consider what Ethernet APL can do in your product portfolio. I am Andreas Hennecke. And thank you for watching. Thank you, Andreas. And, and now just imagine a round of applause out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so settle down. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> I, I just brought this device, uh, this level instrument um, you, you gave me before. And um, well, as I said in, in my simple words, it, it can measure multiple values, but these um, uh, values, uh, but these values can't be communicated. But Ethernet APL will make this possible. Please uh, explain us how. Well, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, um, if you look at the Ethernet connection like this, it just doesn't fit. And this type of a connection also really does not work well for process plants. Um, really, here's the two-wire cable that goes here into the cable gland. It is then connected actually via a um, screw-type connector that you see here, which is inside the instrument. Now, here's the main part of it. One, some of these instruments, like this one, can have literally hundreds of configuration values that users need to set. So this needs to be done in the office. And even if you do this in the office using a hard protocol or any other protocol, where you're limited to 1,200 bits per second, transmitting 600 configuration values to an instrument can that, take that you time. minutes. <laughs> so you have to drink a lot of coffee during that time that you're configuring the instruments. Now with Ethernet APL, this goes in a jiffy. It just happens this anymore. fast, the instrument is set. And the best part is, with Ethernet APL, this instrument actually remains in place. And there's another advantage that we have here, is that higher layers above the physical layer have something that is called the port detection. And what happens if we change the instrument, what the switch can actually do, it realizes that a device has been disconnected and a new device has been connected to the very same port. So now the higher level software can detect this change and basically tell the operator, well, wait a minute, here was an instrument exchange. It is on the same port. Do you want to use this as a replacement device in the setting? So then the system, the higher level systems can help automate these types of tasks by allowing the user to basically just interact with the software at the same time, the device description that describes 600 configuration points are stored in here. So when we're connecting, this information is pulled up and then it's also very safe to configure this device at the same time. So all of this helps reduce errors because we're reducing the human interaction and we're focusing the human interaction on the actual value that is setting up the device that it works in this particular process plant. Mm. We'll talk about the advantages of um, Ethernet APL later in our networking launch. There's one more question since you had the, um, the cable in, in your hand. Is it a half duplex or full duplex? Yeah, that's a, that's a real interesting question. Um, in field bus, we're used today to half duplex communication. This means that one device talks and then the other device responds. Mm -hmm. With Ethernet APL, we actually have full duplex communication, so both devices can transmit at the same time. They're just using different frequency carriers to do so. Yep. Right. So, thanks, Andreas. I, I think there are uh, many questions or input from uh, your side, and um, if you want to give us uh, those inputs, don't hesitate. Uh, use our chat option, and um, yeah, we're happy if you have any ideas or uh, questions, maybe where you can use uh, Ethernet APL. So if you're thinking about maybe cameras or whatever, just ask us, and we'll pass those questions on later in our networking lounge. And this starts in exactly half an hour at 4 p.m. German time. So see you then, and thanks again, Andreas.